Hey guys, thanks for clicking into the video. In this one we're going to be covering the full build of the Wolverine cowl from the X-Men and possibly the upcoming Deadpool movie. Firstly we 3D printed the helmet using an STL file which I'll provide a link to down below in the description. The 3D printer we used is the Creality Pro V2 which is probably the best one for printing larger projects like this helmet and in this case we actually have to splice it into two separate prints for the main part and then separately the edges of the cowl and the tip of the nose. Ideally, if you can avoid splitting a print into two separate prints, I would highly recommend this. Even if it means having to print out a few more support structures, it will save you so much effort in the long run as you'll see now. To fuse the parts together, I basically use masking tape on one side to hold everything together. And then using a generic solder, which you can buy on Amazon for like 10 euro, we physically bonded it together, which leaves behind these marks where it was soldered over. And although it's super satisfying to solder itself, if you can avoid it, I absolutely would. So then next up is the sanding and this part is pretty much what will dictate the quality of your final finish. Obviously the more sanded the smoother the finish and the better it'll look overall. For projects like this one that have a large surface area without a huge amount of small details I would highly recommend getting a machine sander for the larger surface areas otherwise you'll be spending days sanding it down and your hands will not thank you for that. The sandpaper on the machine I believe was an 80 grit and once that was done I manually went over the smaller areas with more detail using the 80 grit sandpaper. Now with the machine sander make sure you don't hold it in any one place for too long as the plastic can almost melt under the heat and pressure and it can get rid of some of the more intricate details. So for those areas again using by hand 80 grit and from there on once that was finished I went over it again with a 180 grit, a 240 grit and a 400 grit to give it as smooth of a finish as possible. Once you're happy with how you've sanded it down, I don't actually show it here but I show the end product where basically I take wood putty and I put it into the soldered areas where you can see those little gaps which I then sand it down to allow for a smooth finish. Now we're onto the primer which is the undercoat for the paint for which I did two layers and for this make sure you're doing it in a well ventilated area and keep the distance from the mask and the spray can just to ensure even layers. After each of these layers I allow it to dry and I'd sand it down to again give it a smooth finish but overall I give it about two layers of primer and once that's done I give it about two hours to completely dry. We then applied the paint for which I use a generic hardware store paint for the black part and that this part is something I did but I wouldn't advise, not because it made a mistake but because it just wasn't necessary. I put on the masking tape and cling film to the parts that I wanted the colours to separate at and although it was super satisfying to peel off, in future I think I would make way more sense just to spray those parts without wasting time on the masking tape and trying to be super accurate because those parts will be getting sprayed over and secondly it ensures that there's no gaps where there hasn't been any paint applied. In my case, there were a few lines here and there that I could just fill in by hand with a paintbrush and avoid the hassle. For the second part, the masking tape and the cling film is crucial and the more accurate and detailed you are with the lining on this part, the better it'll turn out. 
To ensure that no paint leaks through the tape, make sure you're keeping it solid distance from the mask and spraying light even layers over and not concentrating on one specific area as that can cause some of the paint to pool and possibly soak through the masking tape. I also like to peel off the tape and foil as soon as possible just so that the tape doesn't stick too much to the paint below and cause any sort of peeling. So after the paint looks relatively dry, maybe give it an hour, I start to peel off the tape and the cling film. And so there you have the basic Wolverine Kel. However, we wanted to give it more of a worn down weathered look. And shout out to Props and Stuff who has a great video on this. I'll link his channel down in the description below. But we basically just got brown acrylic paint and diluted it with water. We then applied that to the yellow part of the cowl and using just an old cloth, rubbed it down. And what that did was give it a kind of weathered look. It also brought out more details and more of the wrinkled parts of the cowl, which gave it a bit more depth. When rubbing in with the cloth, I would recommend doing it in circular motions to make it more natural and avoid kind of these brown streaks. We then used a heat gun in between these layers just to make sure it's dry down and applied these layers multiple times. I think it was like two, three layers in total. And what this does is it just gives a bit more texture and a bit more layering to it. And yeah, once that is fully dry, then that is the completed Wolverine cowl uh, with the weathered look. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more.